I've read over a hundred books on business and life, but only four of them truly helped me make over $30 million. I'm gonna share the biggest lessons from each and practical tips you can use right now to make more money. And at least two of these books will surprise you because they're not even about making money. Now, the first book taught me exactly what I needed to know to buy and flip a business and make a $300,000 profit in just over a year. Now, this book is written by Sam Walton, who started a small retail store and grew it into the multi-billion dollar giant, Walmart. I remember when I first read this book and I thought, can I really learn something new and fresh from this guy? I mean, he's old, but it actually changed the way I view running a business. For example, in the book, Sam talks about how he would change the width of the aisles and he would test how much revenue each width made him. So one week he'd make it wider and he'd see how much people bought when they walked through the aisle. Then the next week he'd make it more narrow and he'd see if that increased or decreased sales. And he did hundreds of these little tweaks to build Walmart into what it is today. And the lesson here is success is in the specifics. Now you might think, does that level of detail really matter? Yes, let me give you an example from the business that I flipped for a $300,000 profit. It was a bar and restaurant in a small town in Florida. Now, what I would do is I would tell the bartenders when you upsold a drink, use this specific phrase all week. And it might be something like, would you like another? And then the next week we try a different phrase, like you look like you need a refill. And then the next week we'd use a different phrase and we would test how much extra revenue we made on the upsell depending on the phrase we used. I would also test different playlists and believe it or not, certain playlists with certain songs would produce more alcohol sales than others. And this small bar that wasn't even on a main road, it was off the beaten path, I was able to test my way to such increase in profits that I sold the bar 14 months later after I bought it in the state of Florida, where it's extremely difficult to even make a bar successful at all, sold it for a $300,000 profit. And the only reason I was able to do this was because of the incredible level of detail I applied to the business. And I continue to do that in my online business as well. This book is called Made in America by Sam Walton. And here's what you can do right now in case you don't wanna read the book. If you can't find a mentor to teach you what to do, you can test your way to success. Take every little part of your business that could be improved and test it. Make small incremental changes until it all adds up to one big massive change. Success is a series of small, smart choices. Now this next book isn't even a business book. In fact, it's a book on how to pick up women. Now you might think, what does a book on picking up women have to do with making money? Believe it or not, it's more connected than you think. See, the author of this book was a reporter who spent a year with a group of pickup artists that taught seminars to men, teaching them how to attract women. Now these men were not rich, they were not in shape, they were not good looking, but they were successfully able to attract women way out of their league because they simply knew how to end engineer attraction. See, attraction is simple psychology. There's certain things you can do and say that are attractive to other humans. And if you know what those things are, you can become attractive. And so if you read this book and you simply replace the word woman with customer, there is a ton of marketing and persuasion gold in here. Think about it. Everything in life is attraction. You choose what food you want to eat, not based on the ingredients, but the pictures on the menu. You choose what car you want many times by the look of the car. That's attraction. You choose whether or not to go see a movie based on the movie poster or the trailer, which very rarely accurately represents the movie. The lesson here is attraction drives action. Learning to be attractive will help you succeed in all aspects of life. Imagine if you knew how to attract clients, build a network, and just build massive influence because you knew exactly how to present yourself to be the guy that everyone wanted to be around. So if you consider yourself an open-minded person, you can read the book, The Game by Neil Strauss. But if you don't wanna read the book, here's three practical tips you can implement right now. The first one is peacocking. In the book, a lot of these guys had trouble starting a conversation with a woman. And if you are a man, you know how difficult it can be to just 
walk up to a woman and start a conversation. Once you're in the conversation, it's a lot easier, but starting it is the hard part. And so what peacocking is, is where you wear something loud or extravagant that's just really oddball. And it makes women come up to you and laugh or compliment you or ask you where you got a certain piece of clothing. And that starts the conversation so that you don't have to. Now you can just continue it. And they call it peacocking because the peacock is the most attractive bird out of all the bird species. And so one way I used this in my business was I went to a marketing conference and I took this top hat and I sewed some bunny ears onto it. And I walked all around the conference and people would come up to me and they'd go, oh my gosh, I love that hat. Or, or oh my God, you're, you're a madman. And I would connect with them. And then they would say, hey, what do you do? I would tell them about my business and boom, I got a ton of clients from that. One time I did a music video that was just wild and outrageous. And it was a parody of the movie Step Brothers. Well, we spent about $17,000 running that ad and we did $900,000 in sales. Peacocking. The next one is negging. Now this one you have to be very careful with because if you don't do it right, you're gonna come off like a So negging is a tactic where you basically approach a woman who is very beautiful, like clearly, obviously super attractive and you treat her like she's just normal. Now, this doesn't mean that you be mean. You just don't shower her with compliments like most guys do. And what this does is it causes you to stand out. A way you can do this in business is when you get on a sales call, you can say something like, hey, listen, this may not be for you, but blah, 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 blah. Well, now it seems different because you're not hard selling me. In fact, you're telling me that it may not even be from me. So now, now I kind of want to know what it is. Now I'm interested. And this may sound cliche, but people want what they can't have. So even that little subconscious suggestion can be very powerful. Another example you can do with a sales meeting is never say, thanks for taking the time to speak to me today. You shouldn't be thanking them. It should be a privilege and an opportunity for them to speak to you. So you say, congratulations for taking the call. For instance, let's say you're a wedding photographer. You wouldn't say, thank you for taking the time to speak to me today. You'd say, congratulations for taking this call. Getting married is a beautiful thing and it's a beautiful day. Even if you're desperate to make a sale, never act like it. People do not want to do business with people that need them. They want the opposite. And finally, storytelling in conversation. In the book, it talks about how powerful it is to tell stories when you're speaking to women because stories captivate people much more than just normal dialogue. So what I recommend you do is always have a story for every possible sales scenario, marketing scenario, or conversation locked and loaded, ready to go. For instance, in one of my companies, we sell seminar consulting. And what this means is someone wants to hold a seminar, invite people to it, and then sell a product or service at that seminar. And we help them write the content for that event. And most of the events we do are actually virtual. They're online, not in person. And so one question we get a lot is, hey, Will this work on Zoom, online, or do I need to have people in an actual room to make good money with this event? And so I'll tell the story of how right when COVID happened, I had a live event planned and obviously we couldn't do it because the whole country got locked down. So I ended up doing it on Zoom instead and with only 158 people on the Zoom, I did $1,024,000 in sales. When I tell that story, it's much more powerful than me saying, hey, yes, virtual works really good. It works just as good as live, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just not as powerful. And so always have a story to illustrate any important point or overcome any question or objection, locked and loaded, ready to go. Now, once you have a little attention, this next book will tell you exactly what to say to master persuasion and influence. And it's super beginner friendly. If you're a fan of American football, you know that football players don't just run around and throw the ball to whoever's open. That would be chaos. They do a huddle, they have a series of plays that they've practiced a thousand times in training and they pull out the play they need for the situation that warrants it. Well, when you're in a negotiation or a sales call, you need to have a series of plays that you can run as well. Imagine every time you had a conversation or a sales call or a negotiation, you knew exactly what to say before the conversation happened. And the lesson here is the worst time to think about what to say is the moment when you have to say it. This book is by Phil M. Jones and it has 
a series of phrases that you can use in sales and negotiation situations. And the book is called Exactly What to Say. Now you may be thinking, can these specific phrases really make that big of a difference? Yes, they can. So if you don't wanna read the book, here's four specific phrases that have made me millions that you can use right now. First is just imagine. See, people think in pictures. Whenever we think of doing something, we visualize it in our head. That's why if there's something that you would just never do, you often say, I just can't see myself doing it because people think in pictures. And so if I was trying to sell you YouTube consulting and I said, just imagine waking up to a video you posted the night before and seeing tens of thousands of views. See, now someone in their brain is thinking about opening their laptop and looking at their video, something that they've wanted for months or possibly even years. They're visualizing it and it's much more powerful than saying, yes, we can get you more YouTube views. If you sell weight loss, you might say, just imagine what it would be like. You walk into the room and all the heads turn and they think, wow, she looks amazing. This phrase may seem simple or gimmicky, but it's really not. I mean, just imagine every single time you get on a sales call or you're in a conversation, you know exactly what to say. And as soon as you say it, you see a smile creep across that person's face and they just nod their head and they agree with everything you say. See what happened there? Next is how open-minded are you about? Everyone wants to seem open-minded. So when you ask a question with this frame, it it's hard to say no, because then you seem like a So for instance, if I'm a tax strategist and I know I can save you a lot of money in taxes, but my services are pretty pricey, I could say something like, how open-minded are you about making a pretty large investment today, but getting a massive return when your tax bill comes? What are they gonna say? No, I'm not open-minded about making a huge return on my investment. And so the frame just leads people to the natural conclusion of yes, Take my money. Next is, if I could, would you? If I could offer you a huge discount on a bulk order, would you be interested in purchasing today? This works because of a scientific principle called reciprocity norm, which is studied heavily in psychology and it suggests that people are naturally inclined to returning favors. Next is, how would you feel if. Similar to just imagine, this taps into the feelings, not just the mental picture. For instance, let's say you were trying to sell a subscription service for monthly groceries. How would you feel if I could save you 20% on your monthly grocery bill? Now, what's someone gonna say? I would feel terrible. No, of course, they're not gonna say that. They're gonna say that would feel great. And that's much better than, hey, I can save you 20% on your monthly grocery bill. No, how would you feel if that happened? I would feel amazing. Again, another powerful phrase, and when you string these all together in one conversation, mwah, oh, you become a master of persuasion. Now, I'll give you one more bonus one because this one has made me crazy money. And it's super useful anytime you get an objection, whether that's in sales or just, you know, going to a certain movie with your wife. And it's, what makes you say that? And what this does is it allows you to understand the reasons for the objection so you can better overcome it. I'll give you an example. In the past, we've sold business masterminds that were one year long. And so sometimes on a sales call, a business owner would say, well, I'm very interested, but now's not the right time. Now, instead of me saying, well, if you get in now, there's a discount, or well, we've only got so many spots, or something like that, I say, well, what makes you say that? Well, I'm going on vacation for a month and I won't be back for 30 days, so I would essentially be losing a whole month of my membership and I'd rather just start when I get back. Got it, so if I could give you an extra month so that when you left and came back, you didn't lose any time. And if during that month you're gone, you happen to log in, watch some of the recordings, or maybe you want to attend some of the calls, you can consider it bonus time. Would you sign up today? I've used that in so many sales calls for that mastermind, and that mastermind was $55,000. And I swear, I could count probably off the top of my head 20 times that has worked. And 20 times 55,000 is quite a bit of money. And the reason it worked is because they, they weren't really saying it was a bad time. They were just saying, I don't want to lose a month of my membership, which I can easily make a concession for by giving them an extra month. But I wouldn't have known that unless I said, what makes you say that? And you'll notice I also used, if I could, would you, in that response as well. So when you stack these, they become very powerful. Now this last book has made me more money than any book I've ever read combined. And 
It's a children's book. Now you might be thinking, what could I possibly learn about making money from a children's book? Well, what I'm about to teach you is actually pretty advanced, but it can make you millions. So have you ever been completely confused by something? And then someone grabs some objects and they illustrate the point with the objects and then you, you get it. Well, that's called an object lesson and it's used extensively in teaching children complex subjects. Now, the book was originally used to teach biblical principles to kids in youth group, but I found a way to make money from them. See, in marketing, the biggest enemy to sales is confusion. A confused buyer never buys. So I took these object lessons and I reworked them for my marketing. And I even created new ones just based off the mechanics of the ones in this book. And I especially use these in sales videos and on stage when I do seminars and it's closed me millions of dollars in sales. So let me give you an example of one using a flashlight. Now, the original example in the book talks about how faith is like a battery in a flashlight. Without it, the flashlight is, well, pretty meaningless. But once you add the battery to the flashlight, now it has meaning. And so life without faith is meaningless. So let's say you were a business consultant and you were trying to illustrate the importance of having core values and a mission statement. You could say your business without a mission statement and core values is like a flashlight without batteries. But when you instill a strong mission and core values, your business lights up and you can now point that light in the right direction. This may seem incredibly, well, stupid. And I agree with you, it does seem stupid. But the first time I learned about this was when I attended an event where I met a world-class speaker and stage selling coach. The event had only 15 people. This guy gets up on stage and he starts using these really simple analogies. And I honestly thought it was like really dumb. I thought there's no way these business owners in this room are gonna pay this guy money. Well, after he was done, he pulled over $200,000 out of a room of 15 people. And that's when I learned that whatever I thought was the right way to do things really wasn't. I had to figure out what the right way was and then I just had to learn how to do it. And by the way, you don't actually always have to use objects, you can use analogies as well. So here's an example from my business. In one of my programs, I taught people how to sell their products and services for a premium price. But first, I had to get them to believe that they were worth more. And so I said this, imagine 10 of your ideal clients are walking down the beach and they come across a genie lamp. They rub the lamp and out pops a genie. Now this genie is a capitalist. And so he grants only one wish and he makes those 10 people bid on the wish. Now imagine that wish is solving the exact problem that your product or service solves. How high would the bid get? Write that number down. Now, next to it, write down what you currently charge. If there is a huge difference in those numbers, you are undercharging. And the principle here is, if you don't know what you're worth, how do you expect your customers to know what you're worth? Now, whenever I've used this very simple analogy or object lesson, I always hear a, ah, oh, in the audience. And this opens them up to the idea that, oh my gosh, I actually am worth more. So now if I sell them some sort of training on how to charge more and how to land high ticket clients, well, now they are just so much more receptive to the entire idea. Anyway, that's a little bit advanced. The book is called Object Lessons for a Year, 52 Talks for the Children's Sermon Time. And again, it may seem silly, but that stage selling coach that has sold millions and millions from stage, he was the one that recommended me this book. I highly recommend you grab a copy. These four books have been practically instrumental to my journey to $30 million. And I believe if you implement some of these tips, you can make a lot more money as well. Now, if you're just getting started, I made a video where I broke down what I believe to be the easiest online business model right now. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.